Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, fall prevention program. Um, it's sponsored by the Brain Injury Alliance, the state of New Jersey. We would like to welcome Debbie Edelman um, for the presentation. Debbie? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to the Highland Park Senior Center for inviting me here today. My name is Debbie Edelman. I'm one of the education um, uh, coordinators at the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey. We're located in North Brunswick. Um, I have about 45 minutes to an hour with you this morning to introduce the program okay. Heads of Seniors, a fall prevention and pedestrian safety program. We've got a small group here today at the Senior Center, but we are recording this presentation so that other residents of Highland Park can also see it. Um, we speak to groups of five and we speak to groups of 50. Um, I always say hi, you can feel free to welcome to join us. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the organization that I represent, and I also always say that I prefer this to be a discussion versus a lecture. So if any time, uh, anything I say, you have any comments, questions, stories, things that are, have happened to you, I think that it helps for other people to share, you know, for everybody to share their experiences. If you want to chime in, please feel free to do so. I also say I'm not a doctor and I'm not a nurse and I don't take, uh, I don't answer medical questions. I have had people from audiences say, Debbie, should I take this medication with that medication? And the only right answer to that question is ask your doctor or your health professional. Um, I hope you'll agree with me. Um, so I am going to be talking to you a little bit about fall prevention this morning. Uh, first, to introduce the agency. Uh, we are a statewide nonprofit organization with a wonderful relationship. We have a wonderful relationship with the um, New Jersey Department of Human Services, Division of Disability Services. Good morning. And we also have a wonderful relationship with the New Jersey Department of Highway Traffic Safety. Um, we have grants from private corporations and foundations who also support the work that we do in addition to contributions. Um, uh, we have, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, we, uh, the history of the agency. We were funded in 1981 by a group of concerned parents. And uh, we do have about 37 people on staff. A portion of our staff are people who have caseloads who are social workers. If we know of somebody who has had a brain injury or the, fa or, the, or the family member of someone who has a brain injury, we go out, we do home visits, we do care management, we do uh, referral to all sorts of social services and medical and rehab services to improve quality of life for those people. And as I said, we are statewide. We also have a team of people who are interested in prevention, prevention of brain injury, prevention of concussion, and prevention of falls. And so we, this is one of our signature programs. We take our show on the road. Um, we want to tell people, we want to share people, uh, share with people strategies for fall prevention. We want to diminish the number of falls that happen. Um, you're also going to be hearing me use, even in these few short minutes that I've been with you, um, you're going to hear me use the term mild to prevention of mild traumatic brain injury or prevention of concussion. And I would like to explain right up front that those are synonyms. They mean the same thing. A concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury. If you think about a traumatic brain injury, um, I'd like to paint a picture for you that it could be ranging from mild to severe. And so when we're talking about prevention of concussion, we're also talking about prevention of mild traumatic brain injury. And about 70% of traumatic brain injuries are in the mild range, they're mild traumatic brain injury. So we feel it's important to sort of get on that, you know, take our show on the road, get our message out about prevention of falls prevention of concussion, prevention of traumatic, of mild traumatic brain injury. Those are terms you're going to be hearing during this morning's presentation. Our office was also instrumental in the bike helmet law for children, in the ski helmet law. Uh, we have a lot, uh, we do a lot of work having to do with community advocacy and 
legislative and public policy um, that influences the um, residents of New Jersey to stay safe and increase their safety while walking, while driving, and what we're going to be talking about today is about prevention of falls in our homes and in our communities. In a couple of minutes, um, everybody's going to get a copy of a, a home and community checklist, safety checklist. At the end of this presentation, I'll give you all a copy, um, and I'll be going over it in detail with you. It looks slightly different. We just changed the um, the design and the color and the pictures, but the information is the same. For anybody who's watching this on video, if they wanted to reach out to our website, www.biaj.org, we can send you or your organization, or if you know of a group uh, of seniors or a club that would like a presentation like this in Highland Park, and also receive multiple copies of the safety checklist, I can make that available. But everybody who's in the audience today will get a copy and we'll be reviewing the, these things. Um, and hopefully you'll find them helpful as you walk around your home or your apartment or your community. We'll talk, we can talk more at the end of the presentation. So for today's objectives, we're going to be talking about brain injury. We're going to be learning simple steps to prevent falls. We're going to learn at the end of this presentation. At this, at the end of this presentation, I do have a few slides about driving and pedestrian safety. We speak in senior centers statewide. We speak in uh, residential apartment programs for seniors. We speak in 55 and up retirement communities. Some people say that they used to drive, but they don't drive anymore, and that's a personal. We're just. I'm just going to zip through those slides at the end of today's presentation. Some people say they drove all their life. It's a personal decision, um, either made with their family or the health professionals when they decide they feel that it's not safe to drive anymore. As far as being pedestrians, we're all pedestrians at some point. If you're out shopping um, and you're parking in the mall and you're and you're parking in far away in the parking lot, you sure want to use safety strategies to avoid um, any accidents or injuries that can happen in the parking lot. I'm a walker. It's a hobby. I do it two, three times a week for half an hour at a time. It's one of my passions. I like to walk. I'm a pedestrian. A lot of seniors say they like to walk. It's a good hobby. It's a win-win. You're moving your muscles, getting fresh air, clearing your mind. You go with a friend. It's great to talk. It makes the time go fast. So at all times, so really, everybody, I, 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 for me, walking is a hobby, and for a lot of seniors, they say that that's true for them. But at all, some point in our life, we're all pedestrians somewhere, out shopping on a main street. Some of our towns, like Highland Park, have a walkable main street to might be their shopping. Um, so I do have a few slides sort of towards the end of the presentation about pedestrian safety. And hopefully it will challenge your brain to uh, be happy and healthy and have some fun. I have some questions I'm going to ask you um, regarding, you can, it's sort of like a guessing game, you can tell me your opinion. Um, but I did mention to you a couple of moments ago, I wanted to define for you what a, a brain injury is. A brain injury, a traumatic brain injury is an insult to the brain caused by an external physical force, like falling downstairs or a car crash. So you think of it sort of as a, as a jolt, you know, as a thud. We get full, you know, pushed forward and back, like we traditionally thought about car crashes. An acquired brain injury is an injury to the brain that occurred um, any time after birth, right? Any time in childhood, in adulthood, in our senior years and could have to do with a stroke, traumatic uh, a brain tumor, aneurysm, or a number of conditions or disorders. Most of the presentation this morning is going to have to do with, as I mentioned to you, prevention of mild traumatic brain injury, prevention of concussion. We'll be hearing you use those terms a few times. So, um, it's known, brain, uh, traumatic brain injury is known as, it's written often in the literature about it, as a silent epidemic. About 12 to 15,000 uh, cases of, of her per year in New Jersey. And as I mentioned to you, we're all about prevention. 
these are underestimates. If you have ever had a brain injury or a concussion and you haven't gone to the doctor or the emergency room immediately following, you might not know that you have had a mild traumatic brain injury. A lot of people say, I think I did, I fell, or I knew someone, a child or a grandchild had a, a sports injury, we think it was a concussion, we're not sure. So these are underestimates. Um, and so they, for the most part, mild traumatic brain injury or concussion, uh, the situation goes undiagnosed, unreported, and untreated. If you don't go to a doctor, you don't go to an emergency room, you probably will not know that it was a concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury. I often say to audiences, and this is only if you feel comfortable sharing, if you've ever, do you know, have you ever had a concussion? Or has someone, a loved one, a child, a grandchild, a next door neighbor, a relative, do you know of anybody who has had a concussion or a traumatic brain injury? My daughter had a concussion. Your, your daughter had a concussion. And a car crash. Was it a car, it was a car crash, okay. Um, thank you for telling me that. I, um, I've been on staff at Brain Injury Alliance in New Jersey for about two and a half years, and we, I never realized how common it was really until I started, as I said, we speak to groups of five, we speak to groups of 50 statewide. I never realized how common it was. Actually, we often do a table display at a health fair or a community event when we have out all of our brochures, materials, and resources on brain injury prevention. And when we have people, when, when people come over to approach my exhibit table to take a brochure or to learn more about our organization, I always ask that question and you would not believe how common it is. People say, I've had more than one concussion, I have family members who have had concussion. Um, it's really more common than we realize. So we feel that it's better to talk about it than not to talk about it. We don't want to sweep the problem under the rug. We want to seek solutions and strategies to diminish, to, to make it smaller, the number of people with traumatic brain injuries in New Jersey. And that's part of the reason why we're here today. So for the most part, it's a hidden disability, right? If someone walks into a room or a store or a medical office with a wheelchair, walkers, crutches, and canes, we know they might have a physical disability, right? If you see someone or know someone who has had a concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury, you cannot look at them and know that they have had a, a, a concussion. It's, a, it's sort of a hidden disability. Um, so as I said, we, we feel it's better to talk about it and we want to diminish the number of traumatic brain injuries in New Jersey. So years ago, I often say to audiences, you know, if you thought about 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago when you say to groups of people or you say to audiences, what do you think was the primary cause of brain injury? What do you think most commonly causes? Years ago, it was car crashes. Right now, in this day and age, cars come with standard safety equipment much more than seat belts and, and shoulder harnesses and, and um, airbags. They have, uh, you know, anti-locking brakes, and they have um, lights that come up on your dashboard that tell you when you've gotten out of your lane. I don't know if you've seen that on any of the newer cars. All kinds of safety features are now in cars that are certainly saving lives. So years ago, the primary cause of traumatic brain injury were car crashes. It's no longer so. So we, that's good. That's 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 good to know. The number one cause of traumatic brain injury are falls, and um, a lot of senior statistics show about 20 to 50 percent of seniors say that they do worry or they're concerned about falls. So we do hope that you take some of these suggest some of it is common sense stuff, and some of it as we go over the checklist, the safety checklist that I'm going to be giving um, our attendees today. Um, you could walk around your home or apartment and see some small changes that you might make where you live and also around, you know, when you're aware of your community, when you're out in the community, so to prevent falls, to prevent concussion. 
Um, also, about 30% of crashes are pedestrian crashes. So, which means it's somebody walking in the street, maybe somebody walking their dog for whatever reason. You see people walking at night if they're not wearing. I love this color orange that this woman in the first row is wearing. They say if you're walking at night, wear orange or yellow or bright colors so you can be seen by cars. And you see people taking a walk at night or walking their pet at night and they're wearing a dark color. The cars can't see them. So those are the types of tips I'm going to be reviewing with you in a couple. Um, I also, you know, the, the print is kind of small. I always bring these, I'm going to pass these around pictures of the brain. They're exactly the same. But I'm going to show you some of the, and you can just pass these around. I always bring at least two copies because I think the print is small in the slides. Um, but when we think about a traumatic brain injury um, and we realize how important it is, the, all the things that the brain does, Right, so if you think about a traumatic brain injury or concussion, it really depends upon which part of the brain was injured and also how severe the injury was. So what I like so much about this graph and this picture, and I can read some of these things to you because I know that the print is small, especially because it's being videotaped. The brain controls so many things that we don't even realize just don't realize. The brain controls problem solving, judgment, planning, uh, personality and emotions, um, organization skills, attention and concentration, speaking, um, memory, hearing, language, uh, sequencing skills, the sense of touch, uh, spatial perception, visual perception, it's a pretty long list. Reading, coordination, balance, skilled motor activity, breathing, heart rate, uh, wake and sleep functions, it's a pretty long list. So you can see that if you don't go, if, you, if anybody that has a, a, a mild traumatic brain injury or concussion, if they just say, oh, I'm okay, I don't need to go to the doctor, or I don't need to go to the emergency department in my local hospital, some of these problems may be present days later, weeks later, and we want, I can get them from you afterwards. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. I can just leave one. the other. Yeah, I can just leave it right here. So, did you want to add something? No, I just want to add something. Um, you know, three weeks ago, I had a concussion. Oh, I you know, I feel. And one thing I didn't hear right you know, when that At grass, the end, we're going to have to go over the detail. Yeah, yeah. grass is wet. Oh. on it. They might have on a steel floor. Oh. Yeah, I went for a CAT scan. What, and they, did they tell you right away it was a concussion? Yeah, they did a CAT scan. Yeah, yeah. Scan. and I had yeah. symptoms. Yeah. And, uh, well, you have to be able wet grass. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially after yesterday as well. Yeah. Right? Slip, slip very slippery. Yeah. Did they tell you anything you needed to do to stay safe? Put ice on it more. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Right, thank you for three yeah, weeks. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. It's really more common. I say the more we talk about it, we realize how common it is. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, I've had a beast uh, tour. Yeah, was it, it was diagnosed. Do, do, can you, do you want to talk about how it happened? Yes. When uh, first one of uh, I was an infant, two days old. They dropped me in the nursery. Oh no. I should have owned Chrome next door. My parents did not believe in suing, okay? Uh -huh. If it was me, I was sued. Anyway, uh, they came to the conclusion they didn't really know okay. what happened, but years later, yeah. Things occur sure. that we associated with. Sure, okay. sure, sure. Uh, the second one was when I owned my house. Okay. And I walked on my front porch, there was black ice. Black ice. My feet went from under me. Right. The back of my head hit the brick wall. Right. Right. We're going to talk about weather conditions also. Needless to say, I crawled back in the house. Yeah. I didn't feel right. Right. Um, but with all my medical knowledge, I said, yeah, I'm going to the hospital. 
Okay. So I did go get checked out, and they did say, yes, it was mild, and okay. do this, and don't do this, okay. and do this, and oh my God, okay. they set me up. I'm glad you got it checked out then. Yeah. So anyway, those were the Yeah, two. thanks for sharing. I, I, I have so many, I've learned just in these last two and a half, I've been in the disability field over 30 years, but in the last two years, the stories that I've heard from people, um, as I said, my office was instrumental in the bicameral law. One day I had a, a, a table display at like a family uh, uh, event in the community, and a woman, 60-something, you know, a senior came over to me and said, she was wonderful, Added, wonderful to talk to, and she said that she has a, her husband, who's also in his 60s, rides bicycle every single day and refuses to wear a bike helmet. Yeah. I think riding a bicycle in the 60s and 70s is a fabulous hobby. Um, but she was quite upset about it. She said that she talks to him all of, you know, she tries to influence him. It's a great hobby, and he just doesn't want to lose a bike helmet. So we know there's certain things we know, you know how we know seatbelts save lives, like there used to be bumper stickers and billboards back in the 60s and 70s, billboards, uh, seatbelts save lives, I think bike helmets save lives, well, I mean there's a lot of evidence that bike helmets save lives, so there are things that we can do to prevent brain injury, again one of the reasons why we're here today. So I'm going to share with you this three or four slides about each one of these topics about thinking, behavior, feelings, and the physical effects of brain injury. Um, but there's no cure for brain injury. Prevention is our best hope. We must get the word out. We can't just, um, we can't just snap our fingers and make brain injury uh, disappear. Um, there is treatment. There is something called cognitive rehabilitation. You might have heard in terms of people want to do uh, regarding physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. There's also something called cognitive rehabilitation, which is a program to help people sort of reorient and retrain um, after a, a, a concussion or a mild traumatic brain injury. They've made a lot of progress with traumatic brain injury, um, but we still feel that prevention is our best hope. Again, um, but you know, letting you know what centers <laughs> townships are offering programs like this. So I'm going to, we'll make this a little bit of a guessing game. I have a few questions for you. I'd love your opinion or a shout out, your answer, but this is just uh, multiple choice. The brain is, a, this is, I'll, I'll take your opinion on this then. I guess again. The brain is very similar to what substance in weight and texture. I'd like if you were going to hold it in your hand. Is it like rubber? Is it like wet cement? Is it like jello? Or is it like chicken soup? Jello. Jello. I'm just guessing. Jello. Huh? Jello. Jello. Okay, it is. It's, sim it's similar. So it's sort of like a soft substance. It's sort of like squishy, you know, and it's surrounded by flu cerebral fluid. And then there's the skull on the outside. So the skull pr pr protects us and protects the brain. In many ways, however, um, I think people have a hard time imagining. Um, so, what you say to us? Yeah, it's like jello. See, I even have a picture of it. It's like what? It's like jello. Jello. The substance like is like just sort of like jiggly. Yeah. That's what I thought too. Okay. And now here's another question. Did anybody have any other comments? And uh, this is the next question: How many adults over the age of 65 fall each year? One-fifth, one-third, one-fourth, or one-half. Just a guessing game. Any thoughts? Fourth. Was there anybody else? Yeah. It's a lot of people, right? It's a lot of people. It's about one-fourth. Um, it, it, it is a lot of people. Actually, once someone has fallen, they're twice as likely to fall again. So, again, we're, we, we hope that people can be aware and, and we can diminish the number. And what percentage of falls occur at home? 25%, 60%, 85%, or 90%? It's a lot of people, right? It is about 60%. 60% of falls occur at home. 
why is this? People say that home is where we spend most of our time, we feel most comfortable and safe, we may let our guard down. I have had people tell me, um, audiences that heard the Heads Up Seniors program, people have told me that they use a walker when they're in the community, but when they're in their home, they don't use their walker. Um, and so obviously that's a personal decision. They want to discuss that with their family and their health care provider. There are very, very many reasons. We're going to be talking about a couple of minutes about the safety checklist about ways that we can prevent falls. I think carpets are really Excuse important. me? The carpets is really Carpeting, yes. Small rugs, people smooth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've got a lot of examples for you in a couple moments. Um, and what time of the day do you think falls happen? What do you mean? And where, and the, this slide yeah, also has, we're going to be getting into a little bit more detail about this. Where do okay. falls most often occur in the home. What you see on the uh, on the uh, screen is every, really every room in the house. You've got a picture of the bedroom, a picture of the living room, a picture of the kitchen where there's the oven, and a picture of the bathtub and shower. So um, the, that's what we're going to be going over in a couple of minutes on the, um, on the safety checklist. And naming two common causes of falls. We've discussed some of this, um, just to go into a little bit more detail on this. If there is something around the house, steps, a loose carpeting, a slip and kind of a slip and fall situation, if there's something wet on the floor. So if there's something that's unsafe, it's preventable if we can take care of it ahead of time. And we'll be going into more detail on that. Um, some people also have a problem with gait and balance. That might cause a fall. That could be at home or in the community. Um, uh, another item on this list is medication use. It's common for seniors to take four, five, six medications per day. It's really uh, not, not uncommon. I don't know if you guys like pill boxes, pill organizers. A lot of people say it's help, they're helpful. Um, but then you also want to make sure that, you know how sometimes they say you shouldn't take this medication with the other medication, they're contraindicated, they don't go well together. Um, you, of course, want to discuss this with your physician um, or healthcare provider. Sometimes you see on a pill bottle that there's a, like an orange cap that says, it's the label that says may cause dizziness. So there's lots of things to discuss, or if you have a, um, a side effect or an adverse reaction from a, 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 a medication, you didn't know that it might cause dizziness or cause you to be off balance. Um, and the other thing you might also want to keep in mind, I, I personally like pill organizers. I use them, I recommend, I recommend friends and family. But once the pill, the medication itself, is out of the bottle, the bottle will say may cause drowsiness or don't take with other medications. But once the pill is not in the bottle and it's in your pill box, in your pill organizer, so it's no longer with the instructions. But so I, I think for convenience, people say they like pill organizers. Do you guys use pill organizers? My sister she, she, she takes a lot of pills. So yeah. she has to have it with Yeah. A lot of people use them and think they're great. She forgets if she took them. Yes, and you can always remember if you took them because the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and see it right. But um, you want to make sure when you're taking multiple medications that in case you do have any side effects or adverse reactions that cause dizziness or your balance to be off and so on, of course, speak with your, uh, your health care provider or your physician. As far as vision impairment, I'll take a show of hands. Is it, is it, does everybody get their eye examined annually? Show of hands, yes? So, if you're walking around with glasses that were prescription glasses, that was your prescription a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four so years ago. It may not be the prescription that you need today. And if you're walking around with prescription glasses and the prescription is not right for you, that could cause dizziness and people. Exactly. It's real, as I said, it's more common than we realize. 
Yes, it will come as no surprise to you that most people will say go for an annual item. Did you want to add something? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what people do too, speaking of glasses? Yes. Some people have to pair regular yes. with a pair of reading. Yes. They mistake the reading yes. for the regular. I've heard, I've heard that. Throws the whole nine yards. I've off. heard that. Yeah. So that's, you know. It's, it's just as I said, these are just little tips to be aware of. Um, and you can, if you can name two ways that you can prevent falls in your home. Now I'm going to give out this uh, safety checklist. These are some of the things that I would want you to keep in mind as we're going to be reviewing all of the, uh, uh, it's a two-sided checklist. Um, the first picture on the left-hand side is a grab bar. I'll take a show of hands. You guys have grab bars in a, so in a tub, in a shower, and that's in the toilet, right? A lot of senior housing, they come standard, you know, either senior yeah. residential apartment programs or some retirement of 55 and up, they would have like a grab bar coming standard in this, like in a stall shower or in a tub. I'm told some of them have another grab bar next to the toilet in case they have trouble getting up. Um, that's not a quick fix. If you don't have that, you probably need a handyman. Some of the suggestions I'm going to be giving you are like a $10 or less kind of quick fix. I'd say getting a grab bar, you probably need a professional, a handyman, or someone who does that kind of installation. But I will say, as I said to you before, seatbelts save lives, bike helmets save lives, I think grab bars save lives. Right? I hope you'll agree. On the bottom of that picture is a set of stairs. We're going to be talking much more about stairs. A lot of seniors choose to live in homes or apartments that are on one level. If you don't have to walk upstairs, why, especially a steep set of stairs, you know, stairs are a, a fall hazard. If you don't need to, some people say they live in a home where there's stairs and they limit the times. They go down in the morning and they go up at night before they go to sleep, but they limit it. If you can live in a place that everything is on one level and you don't have to do stairs, that's great. In the nature, Excuse me? Some places have elevators. And of course, if you live in an apartment building, they have an elevator, of course. Um, but there's a whole, you know, uh, is it you have to add something? There's strategies, you know, if you have, if you have to walk stairs, you always hold the hand railing. If there's a hand railing, hold it. You know, if you feel that it's a day where your balance is off, try not to walk up and down the stairs. There's a bunch of strategies I'm going to share with you about steps. Um, light, the picture in the middle is uh, um, just represents lighting, and there's a picture of a flashlight as well. Um, so are you planning for the unexpected? Do you have a flashlight? This all the show of hands. Does everybody have a flashlight? I can, okay. And I, what I affectionately the junk drawer in my kitchen, that's where I keep the flashlight. Some people say they have a flashlight, but they don't know where it is. Some people say they have a flashlight, but they don't have fresh batteries in the house. So again, that's like less than $10 at Walmart or Target to buy a flashlight or to buy uh, fresh batteries. You guys have cell phones? Do you have cell phones? Did you know that there's an app on your phone? What do you don't know that? One touch of a button and your phone yes, turns into a flashlight. Yeah. And if you don't know how to find it, ask any young person in the five minutes you'll know. It's good to have a flashlight on your phone. But we're going to be talking more about lighting. And also on the on the right hand side of the graph, there's a picture of a step stool. So five feet tall here, guilty mm -hmm. as charged. I love step stools. I use them all the time. I have two in my home. Um, I if you need to reach something on a high shelf or if you need to change a light bulb um, and you stand on a kitchen chair, a dining room chair, or a bridge chair that folds, that's an accident waiting to happen. So do you think that kitchen chairs, dining room chairs, and folding bridge chairs were meant to stand on? No, they weren't designed that way. So guilty as charged. I've done it. I did it when I was younger. It's it's not a good idea. I don't recommend it. I just go myself. 
Huh? I just called my son. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah, that's, that's true. You have somebody yeah. to ask, but um, I have two step stools, and I use yeah. them all the time. So now, 60-something, I don't make that mistake anymore. Um, someone from an audience, when I was speaking on this program a few months ago, said they think a step stool makes a great gift if you know somebody who doesn't have one. Again, we're talking like you know, $10 or so. But um, yeah, I do want everybody to take a look at this checklist. I'll go over it with you. And as I said, anybody watching this recorded presentation, what they would have to do is contact Debbie at the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey in North Brunswick, and we will send you a copy. It's also available electronically. So we'll start uh, reviewing the, um, the, the side that has the picture of the people up at the top. Let's take a look at it for a second. So for instance, and I'll take your opinion on any of these if you think that these are helpful suggestions. Some of them we covered. As I said, some of them are common sense. Some of them are very low cost or no cost changes you could make in your home and your apartment. Um, so the first, uh, on the first side with the picture of the uh, people, um, it says stairways, hallways, and entrances. All stairs are in good repair and sturdy handrails run the full length of the stairs. All hallways and stairways are well lit and kept clear. Sidewalks and walkways are level and free of cracks or holes. And pathways and steps are free of ice, snow, weeds, and newspapers. If you live in an apartment, uh, obviously you don't have as much control about what's going on outside or especially if you're the type of person who likes to take walks outside to get some fresh air, you might need to speak to like a building administrator or building management to see what's going on with ice or snow and leaves on the outside. Um, but a lot of these other things really have to do with your own home. As far as it, even in the, where it says hallways and stairways are well lit and kept clear, I had a gentleman a couple of months ago say that he has a, a whole little hallway between his bedroom and his bathroom, and his dog likes to sleep in the little hallway. No, so it's a dark hallway and a dark colored dog. He doesn't know why the dog has chosen to sleep in that little hallway, but he trips over it, the dog in the middle of the night. He's, 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 that little hallway is not well lit. So I mean, there are just things to be aware of. Obviously, every home or apartment is different. In the bedroom, um, I uh, we recommend keeping a working flashlight and a, and a telephone by the bed. Um, and if, think about your own home. Is there a light switch or a lamp within reach of the bed? And is the bed the proper height to allow easy access? So some people say the beds are not too high. Some no. beds have even drawers underneath that adds to the height. Um, as far as the bathroom, Tubs, showers, and floors. Oh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll take your opinion on this. In your tubs and showers, in your bathrooms, do you use a non-slip mat or have a non-slip surface? So that's, an inex that's a very inexpensive fix. Do you keep thinking now to your stall shower, if you have a stall shower or a tub, do you have a non-slip surface or do you use a non-slip? prevent falls. Okay? It's very, that's a, that's a, like a hundred ten dollars type of purchase. Um, oh, we were talking about grab bars before. Are there sturdy grab bars or handrails installed by the toilet and in tubs and showers? Not, it's not, maybe not an inexpensive um, uh, correction in a home or an apartment, but it's surely a, a safety feature if, it's, if there is one. And the tub, is it the tub, do you have a tub seat, a handheld shower, or a raised toilet seat with arms? Because um, that can be used if, if necessary. In the living room, are, and then just think about, you can think about the you know, places that you, that you live, uh, items, clutter, and wires are kept off the floor and pathways are clear. 
So and, uh, a lot of people have, if you have computers, if you enjoy sitting and searching the internet, so on, a lot of people these days have laptops. There aren't wires. If you have a desktop computer, uh, sometimes there's a beehive of wires underneath the desk. Or you hate to, you hate to see it. We straighten it out when we can, but a lot of people have a beehive of wires underneath the desk. And um, a lot of electronic uh, equipment plugged in. So if there are wires throughout a room or a place that people walk, again, that's an accident we have. Um, and as we continue on that list, it says lights are located by the entrance of each room and night lights are used. Do you guys enjoy night lights? Night lights in every room in the house. Do you guys enjoy night lights? It's a, that's a quick fix. That's like a $10 purchase that we want to right? Um, and someone mentioned, we mentioned rug. We're going to get to that. So our carpet, tile, and floorboards, do they, are they lying flat and are they in good repair? And do not use loose rugs, area rugs that do not have a non-slip backing. So a lot, you, you know, I think that's one of the most common thing I hear from groups when we do this presentation. People like area rugs. It helps to decorate a room. It's inexpensive. If they don't have a non-slip surface on the back, people say it's very common to trip over. Mm -hmm. if, if you've had that experience. So what we hope people will do is, again, it's probably $10 or less for a non-slip backing that you can put on an area rug or somehow secure the rug to avoid tripping over. Work and storage areas are organized so that items are within reach, um, that there's always a telephone within easy reach, and emergency numbers are posted. That's just really a safety tip for anybody. They say to take a piece of paper, write the names and phone numbers of your emergency contact people, maybe your physician as well, name and phone number, and just put it on your refrigerator. That's a, that's a quick fix. Um, this says also, I use a sturdy, raise my hand, I always use a sturdy step stool or a ladder to reach high places and never use a chair. That's a good tip. Um, yeah. And I never use, I never climb a step stool or a ladder when I'm alone. If you live alone, of course, that's difficult to arrange. If you have a friend, a neighbor, a loved one, adult child or grandchild can help you. Mm -hmm. the, that, that would be great, but we, we don't always have that opportunity. And if spills happen, that they're wiped up immediately. So that would be really, I guess, the kitchen or the bathroom. If you're out in the community, if you're at a supermarket or various other places, there could be something wet on the floor. Of course, you should be careful, but you also might want to let management of that store know that there's something wet on the floor that will um, you know, provide more safety for anybody else who's entering the store after you. If you turn over that checklist to the section where it says getting around, it says I wear clothing that fits appropriately and is not too loose. I wear supportive, low heel, non-slip shoes at home and outside. I have paid attention to floors in public buildings, especially if they are slippery. I take my time walking and getting out of vehicles, especially if the ground is uneven. I use my cane or walker if recommended by my doctor. I plan ahead so that I do not go out during rush hour, darkness, or bad weather. Sometimes we have control over that. I mean, if you can, if you have a doctor's appointment and there's a blizzard coming and you can change a doctor's appointment, Probably that's the best thing to do. We don't always have that much opportunity about changing appointments, but if you can, um, arrange your appointments to um, more suitable conditions, it's better. Um, if you are out and about, you watch for cars, bicycles, skateboards, rollerbladers, or other roadway users, and you cross the streets at intersections and wait for the signal that is safe. So you guys will try to cross up crosswalks, right? So you know at the corner you're going to be safer where you have that 
box with the white lines that's going to be a crosswalk at the corner. It might be a few steps out of the way for you. It's safer to cross at a crosswalk, and they also say if you're at a corner or a crosswalk, if you may, if you can, it's not always possible, if you can make eye contact with the drivers, that, that lets you know that they saw you. Sometimes, did you ever see a driver that gives you like a hand motion like this? Yeah. They saw you, you saw them, and then they say go ahead. So that's a, that's a safety feature. As far as your health, again, so we did mention some of these before. Um, I go for regular checkups to make sure that my vision, hearing, or other senses are, sa are safe. Um, I take my reading glasses off while I'm not reading. I exercise regularly to main strength to maintain strength and balance. So I won't be the first person to tell you that it's good to move your muscles and um, exercise a little bit. I, mod I moderate my alcohol consumption. I engage in, in activities that stimulate my mind and keep my brain active. Does anybody have any hobbies they enjoy to share with others? Or you know, people say puzzles. Yeah, I do. Puzzles. I have, no, I saw. You saw, you saw people say sewing and knitting, uh, yeah. crossword puzzles, yeah. word yeah. search. Yeah. I had someone say they love to do go, which I don't know how to do. <laughs> but um, anything, people say uh, jigsaw puzzles. I love puzzles. What else? Puzzles. Puzzles in general. Yeah. Um, what did we say? Oh yes, and my medications, this is what we were talking before, um, medications should be clearly labeled and take them only as prescribed, and that you review your medications with your doctor, and you've talked about possible side effects or interactions. And the last category says lifestyle, um, and this is not for everybody, but uh, this says I have a fall detection device or a cell phone. Most people have cell phones. Do you know people or have you tried any of these electronic devices? It's a personal decision or you make that decision with your family or your doctor like people with uh, a, bracelet. a bracelet or a necklace yes. and that they, heaven forbid if you fall, you push a button and you'll, yeah. I, okay, oh, I'm, do you know, I'm glad to see you wearing it. I've had, I've had people, you should never need it, but to have a cape of emergency. I've had people tell me that they purchased it they pay the monthly fee and they purchase the electronic device, but they don't use it and it's sitting on their night table. So it's good to have. It's a personal decision, right? Um, I've arranged for daily contact with, okay, if you live alone, uh, this says you arrange for daily contact with a friend or family member. If you have a next door neighbor that you like, if you have a friend or relative that lives nearby, it's just uh, something to keep in mind. And that I'm careful not to get up too quickly, especially after lying down, resting, or eating. And that you discourage pets from sleeping, or that this gentleman, like this gentleman, this is a true story, um, discourage my pets from sleeping in pathways or under, that are underfoot. I've also had people tell me that when the grandchildren come and bring Legos and toys, yeah, so and when it's time to go home, you have to do a search of the floor. I have to yeah. move grandchildren myself. You have to do a search of the floor that they took all their toys home. We want to do anything to prevent a fall of some tiny piece. You would have, never have no, never have an idea that would be there or that there would be a fall hazard. But if you have a child and grandchild visiting, you don't know if they left the toys. Um, and then at the bottom, it just says in people older than 65. Falls account for over 70% of traumatic brain injuries. You can help prevent these and other injuries by adapting your home and lifestyle to include safety measures. Use this checklist to identify potential improvements for your home and your lifestyle. And if you know someone who's struggling after a fall, of course, contact me at a helpline. Um, it's a person, very helpful person, not a robot. Um, who can answer questions about um, brain injury. I've had, I hope you find this, found this helpful. I've had people from the audience tell me they 
posted it on their refrigerator with a magnet, and when their friends or relatives came over, they literally walked room to room to see which, which safety features they have and which they don't have. I see it sort of as a um, discussion starter. Yeah, I don't know. Do you, do you need I do. Uh, my numbers at the 800 numbers at the back of the box. Yes. Oh, it's here. It is. Oh, okay. It is. I didn't but I, realize I there was another I side give, to this. Yes, I give you my business card at the end of the okay. presentation. So I hope that your family suggestions helpful. Yes, um, thank you. Good, I'm glad. Um, I'm gonna just breeze through a couple of this. This is mostly a review. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a few slides about what we were talking about walking and being a pedestrian. 73% um, of pedestrian fatalities occur at non-intersection locations. And 20, those are people who didn't walk to the corner, to the uh, crosswalk. And 26% of pedestrian fatalities occur between And um, if you can name two ways to be a safe pedestrian, these, these are, we reviewed a lot of this, but these are uh, common, kind of common sense um, items. Cross at corners and cross walks. Look both ways before crossing the street. Walk sober with no distractions. And yes, if you look at teenagers or people, you know, your people, they cross the street. It always amazes me walking, crossing the street and looking down into their cell phone not a good idea, and dress to be seen, use reflectors and lights. As a matter of fact, um, there are some, again, we're talking about low cost items, there are um, belts you can buy or, or, or strap that are uh, glow in the dark, mm -hmm. an ex inexpensive item. Um, and for those of you um, who walk their dogs and who walk their dogs at night, there are even glow in the dark leashes, again, it's an quick fix. Um, there are, uh, even if you wear a sweatshirt, you can clip on the zipper. It's a zipper pull, inexpensive item, and close in the dark, so an upcoming car, you know, uh, will be able to see. And if this, and this is also a very common question, if no sidewalks are available, which side of the road should you walk? So if you are walking and there's no sidewalk, you're supposed to walk uh, opposite the traffic. So you see the car and they see you, right? But if you're a bicycle, if you're on a bicycle, you're supposed to go with the traffic. The same, because you have to follow the rules of the road. So if there's a bicycle, a bicyclist, they go with the traffic in the same direction as the traffic. So you have to teach your kids. Right? Yeah, you have to teach the kids. That's a very, it's a very, actually a very common question. Yeah. And one reason why seniors are at high risk for pedestrian injury, um, we, we went over some of these things before, um, hearing problems with hearing, mobility, vision, and reaction time. And as I mentioned to you before, some audiences we speak to, the people say they are still driving, some people say, they choose to be safe and not drive. It's a per personal decision or, of course, a discussion with friends, family, and doctor. Um, but I do have a few slides about safe driving, what's the most common causes of crash, and um, these are some of the things that we want to keep in mind. Of course, feeding, distracted driving, drowsy driving, impaired driving. There's also something mm -hmm. came Something came to our attention. This is actually a free service. If, you, if, 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 if any of you are at, uh, members of AARP, I've seen them advertised in the newspaper. It's like a 20 minute session specifically for older adults that are drivers. It's called Car Fit. And um, they just put you in the car. It's like a technician puts you in the car and makes sure, you know, some people say they're too close to the dash mm -hmm. or, or they're, they're the seat, the yes. uh, strap cuts them in the neck. They have, it's, tw it's 20 minutes. I happened to be in an audience a few months ago, and a woman raised her hand and said she had just gone for the free car fit session. She thought it was great. 
she learned a lot. So it's good to know. Yeah, you have to see it at you could you could Google AARP uh, and find out where they're located. I just saw I live in Longman County. I just saw one advertised the some uh, at community college just has it like one day a month and older adults can go and it takes twenty you have to go by appointment. You can't just go in. But the name of the program is for car fit helping mature drivers find their safest fit. Um, I'm going to um, scroll to um, a couple of other slides. This is a review of things that we've spoken about. I did want to re uh, mention to you, especially if anybody came in a little later, that I do represent the Brain Injury Alliance of New Jersey and Brunswick, where all of our programs are free, um, we're statewide, we have a resources helpline, 800-669-4323. Um, if you should know of anybody, a friend, family member, relative who has had a brain injury, who um, is having difficulty accessing health care, social services, medical care, our um, professional staff will be able to um, connect them with things that will improve quality of life. And if you do have a computer and you like searching the internet, check out www.diang.org. That's our website. We've got tons of, of material on this subject. Um, there's a lot of interesting articles and videos you might want to learn more. Those of you who like to do uh, Facebook or other social media, we're connected in many, many ways to many platforms of social media, and um, I'll thank you for all for your time and attention. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.